And so number 17, the last question then in the 2013 Advanced Higher Maths exam. Now, the last question, that's typically where the examiners would maybe have a little bit of fun with you, maybe taking some more advanced or lengthy process and breaking it down into bite-sized pieces. In the past, sometimes that's produced quite a big cumbersome dollop of computation, but here actually, this is a fairly harmless wee beastie you've got this time. So what have we got? For the first part, we've got these two infinite series here, where x is a proper fraction, less than 1, and it said, write down the sums to infinity of both of those. Well, that's straightforward. Just identify the parts. The first term is 1, and the common ratio is x, you're multiplying by x each time. So in this case, the sum to infinity of that, being a over 1 minus r, will be 1 over 1 minus x. For the first one. And this one, same again, your first term is 1, only this time you're multiplying by a negative. Notice the alternating signs. So r is going to be negative x. Then once again, the sum to infinity will be a over 1 minus r, 1 over 1 minus negative x, so you've got 1 over 1 plus x. So I don't know if that's a mark each, or maybe just one mark. Now the next part, this is where it may look a little bit scary, but it's not really. What does it say? Assuming it's permitted to integrate an infinite series term by term, show that, look at this expression. Now when you look at that, you should notice some similarities here. It's got 1 plus x over 1 minus x. Notice the curved brackets, because in this case, because x is a proper fraction, this will never produce a negative amount, so you don't need those raincoats, those modulus at the side. Now, as soon as you look at that, you think, oh, no, you could break that up into the log n of 1 plus x minus the log of 1 minus x. And then you look at that and think, hmm, there's a similarity here. Those are the derivatives of these things here. So if I was to do this, if I was to differentiate this, if I was to do d by dx of ln of 1 plus x over 1 minus x, that would be the derivative of these two terms, and that would produce 1 over 1 plus x. The derivative of that function at the bottom is just 1, so that's fine. This would produce 1 over 1 minus x. Now its derivative is a negative 1. Multiplying by that produces that. What have we got? We've got these two things. That means I've got 1 plus 1 over 1 plus x, which is this expression, so adding that together would be 1 minus x plus x squared, whoops, minus x cubed plus x to the 4, depends how far you want to go, but we'll go up to 5, minus x to the 5 plus dot dot dot, plus this expression, which is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the 4 plus x to the 5, and so on. And of course, adding them together, you're only left with these even powered terms. I've got 2 plus 2x squared plus 2x to the 4. And if we continue that way, if I go for another term, 2x to the 6 and so on. Now, the derivative of this produces that. So if I integrate that back up and integrate this back up, I'll get an expression for ln of, and that's the way it works, that's why it said the thing about integration. So if I was to actually integrate d by dx of ln 1 plus x over 1 minus x dx, that would be the same as integrating this thing. Now there's a common factor of 2, so I might as well pop that out. So taking out the 2, I would have 1 plus x squared plus x to the 4, I'll pop that one in as well, plus x to the 6, and so on, dx. Push that up there to get some space again. So what have we got? Well, for this part here, d by dx of that, those will cancel out. I've got the integral of, although I could just have gone straight back to that, d of this, ln of 1 plus x over 1 minus x, which is the wee beastie I wanted. On this side, I'm going to have two times, now integrating that out. I've got 1, that goes back up to x, that'll be up to 3, divide by 3, up to 5, divide by 5, up to 7, divide by 7, and so on for as far as I care to go. Which means that, since 
the integral of the derivative of that particular term must go back to that term. I've got finally ln of 1 plus x over 1 minus x equals, I mean, I'll just keep that 2 out of it, 2 times 1 third of x cubed plus 1 fifth of x to the 5 plus 1 seventh of x to the 7, etc. Now that was the first part. The second part said, show how this series can be used to evaluate ln of 2. Well, if I want ln of 2, that means I want 1 plus x over 1 minus x to produce a 2. I need to know what value of x I put in to produce this 2. So I'll just solve that little equation here. 1 plus x will be 2 times that, so it's 2 minus 2x. That's 3x equals 1, which means x equals a third. So that ln of 2 should be, I'll just put approximately now, because I'm not going to go on forever doing this, fun as it might be. I've got 2 times, and then replacing the x by a third. So it'll be a third, plus a third, which is just a coincidence, of a third cubed, plus a fifth of, ooh, a third to the power 5, and then you wonder how far do we need to go. It did say 3 decimal places. So it all depends if x to the 7 or the higher terms make any encroachment on those decimal places. For instance, if x to the 7 has got a figure which enters the third decimal place, it'll need it. But even if it's got a figure that enters the fourth decimal place, it could still influence it by carry from the addition in the fourth decimal place. So what I'm going to do is test 1 upon 7x to the 7 at a third. And that's what this calculator's for. It's not just here to knock down any annoying little uncooperative term. It's here because I'll need to do this calculation. I'm not going to work this out in my head to decimal places. But first, what about a seventh of a third to the power 7? Does it encroach on the third or fourth decimal places? Now, for that term, and doubling it, of course, I got 0 point, because it's 10 to the negative 4, 0, 0, 0, 1, 3. So it does, it doesn't, it's not in the first three decimal places, it's going to enter in the fourth decimal place, which could, by addition and carry, influence the third decimal place. So I think I will go as far as that one. So plus 1 seventh of a third of x to the 7. So for this then, I'm just going to have to type all that in, but of course I can save a bit of time by using the answer function. If I put a third and press equals into the answer, then I just need to do answer plus answer cubed and so on. Then of course multiply all by 2. And I've got 0 0.69313 and so on, which of course I'm not justified in going as far as that which means that ln2, <coughs> but I know that any extra terms wouldn't affect that because they would go beyond the fourth decimal place now. ln2 should be approximately 0 0.693. And we'll just double check what that is, in fact. I'll put a wee note here. ln2 actually equals, if you work it out, ln2 is 0 0.69314. So actually went as far as the fourth decimal place there. That was all there was to question 17.